Diamond B Sports presents from the National Hot Rod Association Championship Drag Racing. Competitors and spectators from throughout the United States have jammed the roads leading through the scrub pine and bell meadows, finding a mecca of speed unequaled in the southeastern United States. The 15th Annual National Hot Rod Association Gator Nationals at Gainesville Raceway in North Central Florida. Hundreds of racers have been attempting to qualify for today's finals, battling for a share of the three-quarter million dollar purse. With the intense pressure of close competition, incidents can happen. Ron Correnti of Otterbein, Indiana, took his shot at the straight-line quarter-mile racetrack. Correnti was near the finish line when disaster struck. A massive supercharger explosion literally blew the body off the car high into the air. The ensuing fire engulfed Correnti in flames. Protected by his fireproof driving suit, Correnti brought the bodiless car under control and to a safe stop. Another qualifying incident found Paul Smith of Boynton Beach, Florida, driving Jerome Bradford's brand new 84 Corvette bodied funny car in much the same situation. Smith was near the end of the racetrack when an engine explosion led to a fire. This time, the fiberglass body stayed on the car and Smith struggled for control. The fire caused handling problems and the Inferno took a left turn off the track into the woods. There we discovered a totally destroyed race car, but we found an uninjured Paul Smith. Paul, you feeling okay? Let's I'm fine. Horrible fire and then the woods to contend with. Brand new car, second run. A tough break for Smith and Bradford. Earlier today, the largest crowd in Gator Nationals history was treated to a touch of drama in the first round of eliminations as the low qualifier, Tim Gross, raced the number nine funny car qualifier, John Force. Based on his record-shattering 5.78 second elapsed time mark, Gross in the near lane should have been an easy victor. But nothing comes easy in championship drag racing as Tim Gross watched his early lead turn to defeat as mechanical problems slowed his car just a few hundred feet from the finish, allowing Force the win. The top fuel story has been one of speed as Joe Amato has run over 259 miles an hour. But legendary Big Daddy Don Garlitz provided a first round drama as he raced his arch rival Shirley Muldowney. Moments before this confrontation, Steve Evans had a chance to talk to both Shirley and Don. I really shouldn't be out here. I'm 52 years old. I really don't have the parts, but I'm having a heck of a good time. And of course, this, we orchestrated this race the best we could. You know, when I saw I was 14 and she was six, I didn't make any more runs. I had one more run coming, but I just thought, boy, that would really make a dramatic first round. And uh, so here it is, it's all set. It's like they wrote it in Hollywood and brought it here and produced it. Shirley, you and Don Garlitz have been going at it kind of hammer and tong the last few months. We raced more uh, this season than we have in the last five years. So I think it's good he's back. I think his fans appreciate it and it adds to the class. So I think it's good. Shirley had the better of the two qualifying times. But the spectators displayed their support of Top Fuel Dragster Racing's legendary Big Daddy. Shirley had the advantage off the starting line, but mechanical trouble slowed her at half track, and the KG veteran Garlitz was right there to take advantage and the win. The crowd responded with cheers of victory for the home state favorite, as did Garlitz's own crew member. And Garlitz was a happy man. He apparently lost track. Didn't know much like the moment. I guess. I don't know. Well, the fans certainly loved it. You said before you were having some fun. Well, it's going to get even better. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Big Daddy. Another big break for Don Garlitz as he gets ready for round number two. 
Hello, everybody. I'm Dave McClelland, and welcome to Gainesville Raceway for the 15th annual NHRA Gator Nationals. You know, this is the ninth consecutive season that Diamond V Sports has been on hand to bring you the coverage of the excitement of championship drag racing. There's always excitement at the Gator Nationals, and there's always something new. To find out what's new for 84, let's join Steve Evans. Dave, there's a lot of noise and a lot of fun in the pit area here at the Gator Nationals. In fact, it kind of looks like Times Square on New Year's Eve as the fans are shoulder to shoulder checking out all the new equipment. And believe me, they are not disappointed. There's a dramatic new look to funny cars. Kenny Bernstein's wind tunnel designed for tempo. Raymond Beetle's latest Blue Max sports a Mustang body, as does Texan Billy Meyer in top fuel. Joe Amato's outrageous new wing design no doubt helped him blast a new top fuel speed record of 259 mile an hour in qualifying. And he's hardly new, but he is back. 52-year-old Don Garlitz returns to the Gator Nationals after a three-year absence. He says his fans demanded it. Steve, all the racers' fans are jamming the grounds at the Gator Nationals, being brought to you by Goodyear, who invites you to say hello to Vector, the new design in all-season radial tires, and by Meguiar's Car Wax. For over 50 years, Meguiar's quality waxes and polishes have been the choice of car care professionals, and by Budweiser, the king of beers, and proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. The reigning world champion and defending Gator Nationals top fuel champ, Gary Beck, set low qualifying time and won his first round race. He's getting ready for round number two. We'll be right back with all the action. A huge crowd at Gainesville Raceway for the 15th annual NHRA Gator Nationals as we're set to go into the second round of Top Fuel Racing. Dick LaHaye of Lansing, Michigan, himself a winner on the NHRA National Event Trail, is meeting the reigning world champion and defending Gator Nationals champ, Gary Beck of Hemet, California. Top Fuel Racing is moving into the space age, and Gary Beck's car carries an onboard computer. Computers have been around drag racing for several years now, monitoring various engine functions. But the new computer on Gary Beck's car will give them a totally different kind of database, thanks in a large degree to this trailing fifth wheel that stays on the asphalt at all times. This, coupled with a sensor at the front of the motor on the crankshaft and a sensor on the drive shaft where it comes out of the transmission, it's going to give them some answers to questions that were previously unanswerable. For an example, you know the engine RPM, you know the shaft speed. That tells you the slippage in the clutch. You know the shaft speed, the gear in the rear end, and now you have ground speed thanks to this fifth wheel. That will tell you the tire slippage at any point down the racetrack. And the way this fifth wheel is mounted, its angularity tells you the tire growth, something we have always wondered about. We know they grow, but have never known how much. The very, very interesting information. And in a sample printout here, we can see that every 16th of a second, it prints out engine RPM, the mile per hour, the distance traveled, the acceleration in G-forces, the position of the throttle, even the engine RPM, and a lot more things can be added. Gary Beck and his car owner, Larry Miner, always on the leading edge of high-tech top fuel racing against Dick LaHaye in round number two of top fuel at the Gator Nationals. Gary Beck, your number one qualifier. A big lead for Beck as they near half track. At the finish line, he extends it with a 5.55 second elapsed time. His speed over 251 miles an hour. Beck now advances into the semifinals for Dick LaHaye. His chance at an NHRA championship must come another day. Here is one of the true pioneers of top fuel racing. From Chicago, Illinois, the Golden Greek, Chris Karamasinis. He's racing the man that won the NHRA Winter Nationals Championship just about a month ago. This is Gary Ormsby. Picking up the national event trail about the middle of last season, Gary Ormsby is currently leading the points chase. His second round competitor, the Golden Greek from Chicago, Chris Karamasinis, has a career in drag racing that dates back over two decades. 
for Ormsby until he burst onto the national event scene. He was primarily a West Coast racer out of Roseville, California. But with the acquisition of Lee Beard as his crew chief, Armsby has been dominating the top fuel class, winning the first event of the season. And Karamasini's up in smoke right off the starting line. It's Ormsby with a big lead to the finish and a 5.65 second elapsed time. His speed over 249 miles an hour. As we watch again, you watch the near lane. That's Chris Karamazini's going up in smoke. That means the tires losing traction. A slight loss of traction for Ormsby, but he recovers first, moves towards the finish line, and takes the big win. Well, you got to one of those so-called living legends, the Greek that time, with a very nice 565, Gary. Yeah, it shook a little bit that time, but it was a lot better. We've been having a little problem with shake, and it was a lot, a lot less this time. What kind of an adjustment can you make to lose the shakes? Well, we, put a, we went back to our 15-inch tires, and... Uh, We'll try to put a little bit more power in it. It was a little down in power the first run, too. Motor sure living well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good shape. All right, so this is the leader in the World Championship Chase, Gary Armsby. And Steve, with every win, he's extending that points lead. Here is the man that has everybody talking. This is a brand new car debuted at this race in qualifying just a few days ago. It has never been slower than 257 miles an hour. Joe Amato has run over 259 miles an hour, and some folks think that Joe Amato can run over 260. Here in round number two, he is racing the living legend, Don Garlitz, now of Ocala, Florida, moving out of his former home base in Tampa. For Joe Amato, he calls Old Forge, Pennsylvania home. Joe Amato with a lot of new developments in this race car. And one of the most dramatic is that wing standing high above the race vehicle. Joe Amato's latest speed secret is really not very difficult to find. It's the most radical, tallest wing yet installed on a top fuel dragster. Why is it so high? Well, Joe says it's to get it into clean air, that if it's down in the conventional location, there's an awful lot of turbulence from the engine, from the exhaust headers, and there's not clean air as you'll find up here. Also, by laying the wing back at such a radical angle, if you remember your high school physics, it works as a lever. So you're not just using the airflow to push down, you're also levering more weight for traction onto the rear axle. And also, by getting it to clean air and with this lever effect, you can run a much smaller wing. In fact, this wing is really a duplicate of the 1984 Indianapolis 500 wings, very aeronautically designed. In fact, Joe says you could flip it upside down, it would work almost as well. This is Indianapolis technology coming to drag racing. Does it work? Well, Joe blasted a national speed record the first time down the racetrack. And the question on everyone's mind is, can he top that magic 260 mile an hour mark? But for this huge Florida crowd, they've got their favorite. It's their fellow Floridian, Don Garlitz, Big Daddy himself. Now in round number two against Joe Amato. They met a month ago at the Winter Nationals. Amato won there. What will happen now? Garlitz almost hits the guardrail. And look at Amato run. The times, 5.61 seconds, another 259-mile-an-hour run with absolutely no smoke, no engine damage, and Joe Amato advances to the semifinals. The second half of the Miner Racing Team, this is the boss, Larry Miner, in the near lane, racing against the veteran, Connie Coletta. From Ypsilanti, Michigan, Conrad Galetta has been another of those two-decade stars in top fuel racing. For Larry Miner, out of the off-road racing wars, he makes his home in San Jacinto, California, and races two top fuel dragsters and a funny car in the sport of championship drag racing. Miner, the number three qualifier, has the opportunity, if he wins this race, to race his own hired driver, Gary Beck, in the semifinals. But he has got to stop Coletta, the bounty hunter, in this round. Both cars into the staging beam, the Christmas tree, indicating the green light, a good start for both drivers. And it is Miner in the near lane, and Coletta side by side at the finish by a matter of a couple of feet. Larry Miner wins it. 5.63 seconds elapsed time. His speed over 246 miles an hour. Let's watch again. You can see just how close it is. The two cars leave the starting line as if they are one. It appears that Coletta has pulled just a few feet advantage. But in the middle of the course, here comes Miner. And at the finish, it's his win. So now it's Larry Miner and Gary Beck racing each other again. Uh, yeah, the same round as last year, too. Uh, well, we'll see if we can do a little better than last year. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to it. 
for the boss of the minor racing team, Larry Miner. He lost last year, but they'll be racing again as we get set for the semifinals. Here's the matchups. Joe Amato against Gary Ormsby, and Larry Miner meets Gary Beck for the second year in a row. Don't go away. We'll be right back at the Gator Nationals. The 15th annual NHRA Gator Nationals, and we're getting ready for the second round of competition in one of the most exciting categories of all, the fabulous funny cars. Over 2,500 horsepower under the fiberglass replica bodies of late model American cars. This matches Kenny Bernstein against Mark Oswald. Bernstein, the winner of the U.S. Nationals title. You saw it all on Diamond B Sports last year. Up against Mark Oswald, the driver for the Louisiana-based team of Candies and Hughes. And some problems set in for Candies and Hughes as Oswald is guiding the car backwards. The crew helping push it back. Something apparently wrong with the car. And that gives an easy run to Kenny Bernstein in his Ford Tempo body entry. This car has been in the wind tunnel and it's got a lot of developments that Kenny says are going to make it one of the fastest funny cars ever built. Kenny already has speeds over 255 miles an hour to his credit. He has the option here of taking an easy run. What's he going to do? It looks like he's going to hold it all the way through. And for Bernstein, look at that. 5.79 seconds and a new record-shattering speed of 257 miles an hour as Mark Oswald looks on with his car owners, Leonard Hughes and Paul Candies, disappointed, obviously, going out here in round number two of racing at the Gator Nationals. Our next pair already fired. This is Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas. The fiberglass body being lowered down over the driver and the engine. The sleek Mustang body cutting through the air, providing the stability for these drivers to run over 255 miles an hour. Let's go down now to Steve, who's got Kenny Bernstein. Kenny Bernstein on a single run sets the all-time funny car speed record, Kenny. 257 miles an hour. You already have a backup. Boy, that's super, I tell you. It's tough out there today, but this car is just going right down through there nice and smooth, and Armstrong and the crew, it's their baby. They're doing it. You're the only one I've heard use the word smooth. Yeah, I'm really surprised because everyone is having some trouble, but we're not shaking. It, it may be quiver to taste then, you know, just a teeny bit, but nothing bad at all. So 570s, 257, what more will the track hold? Well, I don't think it'll hold much more for sure. And it's cooling off a little bit. That could help. It could. I hope it does. Kenny Bernstein goes into the semis. What a pass. Bernstein giving credit to his crew chief, Dale Armstrong, also one of those teams using the onboard computer. Here's our next pair. Billy Meyer in the near lane against Al Sagrini. Sagrini of southeastern Massachusetts, winner of the recent Winter Nationals Championship. For Billy Meyer, he started in the sport at the age of 16, has never driven anything but a fuel-burning funny car. Sagrini with his work cut out for him. Billy Meyer, this brand new car has been running in the 580s. The car capable of elapsed times even quicker, according to Billy. For Al Sagrini and his Pontiac Trans Am bodied car, he says, I'm going to stop him right here. And it's Billy Meyer out in front. The car beginning to move towards the center line. He pulls away from it and drives to the finish. A little bit of smoke out of the engine. 6.17 seconds the elapsed time as Al Segrini with lots of problems just shuts the motor off and coasts through. Our next pair sitting fired, approaching the water, getting ready to do their burnout. This is John Collins from Long Beach, California, qualified number two in this very tough funny car field. Against Collins is John Force. We saw him earlier as he took the big win over the number one qualifier, Tim Gross. Here is Al Segrini, the winner of the Winter Nationals, very disappointed. Well, Billy Meyer uh, always pleased with the wind light, but he won't be pleased with the performance of uh, 617. Now, well, it uh, left on seven cylinders and shook my brains out, and I had to lift a couple times, and so we're lucky just to get the wind light. Kenny Bernstein is the only driver that has come down here and said his car is smooth, not shaking. Well, ours didn't first round at all. I don't know what happened then except the drop cylinder caused it from no horsepower. 
John Collins and John Force in this second round of racing for Collins his best performance ever. He qualified with a 5.84 second elapsed time, his home base is Long Beach, California. John Force a bridesmaid many times from Fullerton, California. You haven't won the big one yet. What is it going to take? What is the missing link for your team? We've uh, naturally up to now it's been experience on my driving part. Uh, uh, getting a crew chief like Larry Frazier that can make the car consistent where I can learn how to drive and naturally the money and I think the only things left is a little luck like we had today. You know you are so down on your driving but if you talk to the competition they have tremendous respect for your driving ability. Well I'm, I'm uh, you're the first who said that maybe they don't want to tell me they got to race me but I appreciate that and we have worked real hard and uh, uh, and I practiced a lot and try to drive the car on a on a on a repeating type of uh, basis so uh, me and the crew chief Frazier we can we can keep the program working in the same consistency that it's had. John Collins using an engine built by Lee Beard and Gary Ormsby out of the top fuel camp and look at him go as John Force goes up in smoke near the center line he drives away for it and for Collins his elapsed time 6.09 seconds. That's the amount of time it takes to travel the racetrack a quarter of a mile in a straight line from a standing start. For John Force, this is not to be his first ever big win. You see in the far lane, Force going up in smoke. That meaning the tires losing traction and that automatically is giving the win to Collins. Well, this is John Collins' finest year drag racing in a long, long time. Another round down. It is, Stephen. I'll tell you, it was a tough one when you come up against Force. He's done real well for the last 12 months, and we got by the snake first round and Force the second round. So we've taken two easy ones here. And uh, the center line got a little close. Well, yeah, the car got pretty loose out there that time, and uh, I had to backpedal a little bit and then get back in it. But uh, it, uh, it'll run better. A 609. Uh, that was bad. That was why it got loose out there. It slowed down when it got loose out there. Okay, so John Collins goes into semifinals. Those, those words have to sound good. John Collins defeating Don Prudhomme in round number one and John Force in round number two to reach the semifinal. This now our final pair in the second round of funny car racing. Tom the Mongoose McEwen in the near lane completing his burnout and crewman Fred Miller for the Blue Max completing the starting procedure on 2,500 horsepower plus. The Mustang fiberglass body drops down over driver Raymond Beetle as he approaches the water to get ready to do his burnout. The burnout's necessary to heat the tires. They provide more traction the hotter they get. This is a race between two real veterans of funny car wars. Tom McEwen in the Corvette bodied car in the near lane hails from Fountain Valley, California, regarded by many as one of the premier drivers of any type of vehicle. For Raymond Beetle, operator of a complex of racing equipment and machinery, including the funny car, a NASCAR car, and a sprint car, Raymond Beetle and the Blue Max operation will be racing, and there's something going wrong with the Coors Corvette. The body comes up. That means there are serious problems underneath, and they've obviously shut it off. And what a break for the Blue Max, Ray Beetle out of Dallas, Texas. He gets an easy go into the semifinals. He heads towards the center line, backs out of it, and just coasts through. So it's a big break for Raymond Beadle as his competition, Tom the Mongoose McEwen, suffered some problems on the starting line. McEwen taking off his helmet and his fire mask, and that's a tough break for him. Let's take a look at the semifinal standing. John Collins against Billy Meyer, Ray Beadle against Kenny Bernstein in Funny Car Eliminator. We'll be coming back to the Gator Nationals. Back at Gainesville Raceway in Gainesville, Florida, this is the 15th annual NHRA Gator Nationals. I'm Dave McClelland, and working with me this weekend is Steve Evans. Dave, a tremendous number of improvements have been made to Gainesville Raceway since we were last here, the most noticeable of which has got to be this beautiful new three-story press and hospitality tower. And with me is the man most responsible for these improvements, the founder and chairman of the National Hot Rod Association, Wally Parks. And Wally, it's obvious that you intend your facilities to keep pace with the performance of the race cars. Well, we definitely do, and these are upgradings that we've needed for a long time. It wasn't until we actually purchased the property two months ago that we started on the major improvements, but what it represents is drag racing's commitment to the Gainesville community, and I'll tell you, the support that we've gotten here is just unbelievable. Well, Wally, the crowd is still streaming in. It appears that the only major problem NHRA may have this year is enough seats for the fans. 
Well, that's always a good problem to have. We're fortunate in drag racing. We get, can usually get by with about a third as many seats as we have people because the people are rotating from the pits and to see their favorite classes. But uh, it's a good uh, situation, and it's one that will continue to improve as years go along. Looks like a tremendous season. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll be participating in that season, Steve, as Diamond B Sports will be providing coverage of the upcoming NHRA Cajun Nationals, the Spring Nationals, the U.S. Nationals, and a special feature presentation of the Big Bud Shootout. We hope each and every one of you can join us for those programs. In addition to the professional categories of racing that we'll be covering today, some sportsman racing has been going on throughout this Gator Nationals weekend. In pro stock motorcycle racing, the final round found Terry Vance on a Suzuki against against Charles Gressman, also on a Suzuki in the near lane. Vance extended his lead as he headed to the finish line and won it at over 152 miles an hour. In stock eliminator handicap racing, where the slower car gets a physical head start over the faster. We see the station wagon of Thomas Ward of Florida leading Gainesville, Florida's own Dan Dvorak all the way from start to finish. The winner in Stock Eliminator, Tom Ward from Grand Island, Florida. In Super Stock Eliminator, it's Robert Smith against Philip Webb, and here the red light for Phil Webb gives the win automatically to the Camaro in the far lane. That is Robert Smith of Hagerstown, Maryland. In Super Gas Competition, Richard Godley of Moultrie, Georgia, squared off against Craig Gates of Pembroke Pines, Florida. The 83 Firebird came out the victor at the finish line over Craig Gates in the Vega. In competition eliminator, Larry Torres of Los Angeles racing Virginia's Ronnie Bowler in the Corvette in the near lane. Torres driving his 84 Buick Century from start to finish to the win at over 141 miles an hour. In top alcohol funny car, very similar to their nitro-burning counterparts, Brad Anderson from California against Alabama's Bogey Kell in the near lane. And Anderson with the big lead and the big win at over 216 miles an hour. And top alcohol dragster saw the crowd favorite Daryl Gwynn of Miami, Florida in the near lane against Don Irvin of San Diego, California. And getting to the finish line first, the dragster of Daryl Gwynn at 6.47 seconds elapsed time. Our congratulations going to all the sportsman category champions at this 15th annual Gator Nationals. A tip of the hat to our sportsman champs. In professional racing, it is the factory hot rods, the pro stock eliminators. Butch Leal in the black Pontiac Firebird against Warren Johnson driving the Oldsmobile Cutlass. These the ultimate of the factory cars. This one driven by Warren Johnson, the winner of the last race, the World Finals in 1983. He is racing the California Flash, now living in Ohio. This is Butch Leal. Leal in the near lane, driving the Rod Shop Pontiac, the Oldsmobile of Warren Johnson in the far lane. They're evenly matched, 500 cubic inches, two carburetors each on gasoline. The cars weigh 2,350 pounds, and they run over 180 miles an hour. Towards the finish line they go, and it's Warren Johnson with the win. 7.74 his elapsed time. His speed here a slowing 172 miles an hour as he puts away Butch Leal in the semifinals. This the Pontiac Firebird of the Team Strange entry of Koontz and Clark. Don Koontz is the driver. He is in the far lane of the racetrack in the near lane. The runner-up here one year ago, and now the favorite going in as he has eliminated last year's champion. This is Frank Iaconio from Totowa, New Jersey. His competition is Don Koontz from Cayuga, Illinois. Koontz at over 181 miles an hour has burst onto the scene with this Koontz and Clark Pontiac Firebird. But for Frank Iaconio, his big moment came in the second round of racing when he defeated Lee Shepard in the rare and Morrison Camaro. He, Shepard, the defending champion. And look at the lead by Iaconio. He has got a lead over Don Koontz. Can Koontz catch him? It's going to take everything he's got, and he did not. 
Frank Iaconio with the win moves into the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator. Let's go down to the Larry Minor pit area and join Steve. A lot of activity here in the Larry Minor racing camp as for the second straight year, it is Larry Minor, the team owner, up against his now world champion driver, Gary Beck. Deja vu. The two met a year ago at the same position in the semifinals with Gary winning a clean victory over the boss. But as the season went on, whenever the two of them raced, Larry couldn't even lose properly, stumbling in the winner's circle of the Cajun Nationals. The idea is to take the Team A Gary Beck car to another world title. Larry Miner races his top fuel dragster because he likes to. Some have suggested it's a blocking maneuver, but that is not really true. Larry is dedicated to top fuel, likes to see as many cars at the races as possible, and if Gary should be eliminated by another car, then he indeed hopes to go on to victory. But the two are gonna go to the starting line together again here. Some question the wisdom of that after what we saw last year, especially at the Cajuns. But if I was a betting man, uh, I think I'd bet the farm on Gary Beck to go into the final round here. Steve, that's quite possible, but I'll tell you one thing. This man right here may be the spoiler, Joe Amato. We'll be back to the Gator Nationals in just a moment. The 15th annual NHRA Gator Nationals, and we're set for the semifinals of Top Fuel Eliminator. Jerry Amato, the wife of Joe Amato, the fastest man in the history of drag racing, backing his car up into its own tracks after the burnout. This is a rematch of the recent Winter Nationals final, where Joe Amato, driving his old car, lost to Gary Ormsby. Ormsby in the far lane is the current points leader in the World Championship points chase in Top Fuel Eliminator. His crew chief, Lee Beard, checking everything over, making sure it's just right. He directs Gary Ormsby. Now it's all up to you. Head to the starting line. Tim Richards, the crew chief and engine builder for Joe Amato, does identically the same. Now, the pressure on the drivers. They concentrate on the Christmas tree because the start is all important. A few feet of advantage at the starting line may turn into a car length or more at the finish, and it's up in smoke for Ormsby. Amato heads to the finish line and wins the race, and he has done it. 260 miles an hour for Joe Amato. His elapsed time, 5.58 seconds, and this overflow crowd at the Gator Nationals has seen the first ever 260 miles an hour. Let's watch how it was done. The race was won right there when Gary Ormsby went up in smoke for Joe Amato. That advantage parlayed it into a couple of car lengths at the finish and 260 miles an hour. We haven't run slower than 257, and that was the old record. We're, we're just in sneak. I'm saying all day, people have all been coming up and saying, when are you going to go through 60? But we're, we want to win the race, the points chase. We want to be a world champion, and that's what we're, what we're here to do. So you can't, you can't let the speed... You know, it's nice to say I can go to a 60, but you know, can't let that get you because we have to, you know, win the race and try and tune the car for track conditions. So we've been just kind of sneaking up on it. And he made a little fine tune that time, and he said, if we're going to do it, this is going to be the run. And apparently he didn't know what he was talking about because there it was. Well, someone once said victory is fleeting, but history is forever, and no one will ever take your name out of the drag racing record books. That's, what, that's what's so nice about being able to first one to go to a 60. Congratulations Thank again. You. Thank you very much. Joe Mido goes in the final round with a triumphal 260-mile-an-hour run. For Joe Amato and his crew chief, Tim Richards, a well-oiled combination. You told me to do it, and I did it for you. And for his wife, Jerry, 260 miles an hour. And here's the rematch of 1983. The car owner, Larry Miner, racing his number one driver and the reigning world champion and the defending top fuel champion, Gary Beck. The cars look identical. In the near lane, it is Gary Beck. In the far lane, it is the boss, Larry Miner. Beck has been the low qualifier. He's got everything going for him except that speed record now held by Joe Amato. And it is Beck off the starting line. First, some problems setting in for Miner. And through the finish line, lights goes Gary Beck. 5.62 seconds. The top fuel final, Joe Amato against Gary Beck. What a matchup. The quickest in the race and the fastest in the race. We're set now for the semifinals of Funny Car Eliminator. It will be Texas. Texas Thunder, the nitro-burning horsepower of two Dallas, Texas-based funny cars. This is Kenny Bernstein, the winner of the U.S. Nationals. Raymond Beadle, the driver for the Blue Max. His engine started. He lets Bernstein do his burnout first. 
Obviously, Beetle does not want to build as much heat in his motor as Bernstein uses in his. The drivers meet before the run. They work out who's going to start first, who is going to do the longer burnout. So when all of the burnout procedures are completed, they both approach the starting line at the same time. Let's go to Steve. Gary Beck looks back at the 260 mile an hour race car he'll have to face in the final round. A 562, Gary, but you give up lane choice to Joe. And that's something. It felt like a pretty good run, too. Yeah, it's amazing. On 260, I'm real glad to see it's a tremendous racing team over there, Joe Motto and their entire gang, Tim, Tim Richards, certainly. For It's amazing. It's a milestone in our sport. I mean, I'd have loved to have done it, but uh, I'm glad they did it. It's a, a great accomplishment. And uh, quite a tribute to your team. A lot of people thought Larry would just shut it off on the starting line, whatever you guys raced for it. Well, we're trying to. You know, that's the fifth time we've raced. I got him three, and he's got two. <laughs> little inner shop rivalry. Yeah, that's it. You heard it a little bit this time, Gary. At least uh, the smoke uh, indicated that. Is that right? That could be. I don't know. So, Gary Beck, uh, very serious as always, going into what should be an incredible final round. Top fuel, indeed, is still the king of drag racing. And Beck headed over to shake hands with that final round opponent, Joe Amato. We'll see them in just a few moments. Now on the starting line, it is funny car semifinals. The Blue Max, Raymond Beadle against Kenny Bernstein in the near lane. Bernstein has been dominant throughout eliminations. Can the string hold? Into the staging beams comes both cars. The tree's green and Bernstein's gone. The Blue Max Mustang goes up in smoke, and Bernstein with a four tempo. Look at the elapsed time, 5.79 seconds. No slouch in the speed department at over 256 miles an hour. John Collins against Billy Meyer. This the final race in this semifinal round of competition. Again, Collins first out of the water box, first to do the burnout. Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas, deciding to wait just a moment or two before he starts the engine in his car. The body down, and now his Mustang-bodied creation heads across the starting line, laying down that trail of rubber so important to these racers to provide the traction they need. Steve? Back-to-back 579s, 256. Well, that's super. Uh, the consistency, uh, obviously, right now with us today. One more time, though, it's got to do it to make it all worthwhile. And lane choice seems to be uh, just mandatory if you're going to win here today, so far. So far, as we said earlier, the, the uh, left lane doesn't seem as good as the right, and we'd certainly want to stay over unless something strange happens to the right lane. Billy Meyer has been racing funny cars since he was 16 years old. That's right, the first car he ever drove down a drag strip was a nitro-burning funny car. He has never driven anything since that time. This a brand new car, only the second race ever. His competition, John Collins, number two qualifier, and Collins begins to pull away. Both cars very close, and it is John Collins with a tremendous upset win and going into his first ever final round. Let's watch again. You see Collins and Meyer both having problems as they leave the starting line. Meyer's car losing traction ever so slightly, a wisp of smoke out of John Collins. As we look from another angle, you see they are still locked together side by side as they enter the timing trap. And at the finish line, only a few feet separate the two cars. John Collins comes down and tells Billy Meyer, I thought you beat me. And well, he might have, because Meyer was closing at 239 miles an hour, much faster than John himself. But for John Collins, his first ever final round appearance at an NHRA national event. Oh, Steve, it sure is. I, I'm real pleased. Uh, my car didn't run worth a darn that time, though. I don't know what was wrong with it. It wouldn't leave the starting line. And Billy, uh, like I say, when I got out of the car, I thought Billy had won because he came by me pretty fast in the lights. The finals of Funny Car coming up. Kenny Bernstein against John Collins as we come back to Gainesville, Florida and the Gator Nationals. As we get set for the professional finals at the Gator Nationals, we're in Gary Beck's pit area. We thought there might have been a problem, but just normal maintenance getting Gary Beck's car ready for the final round appearance against Joe Amato. 
Gary Beck, the defending champion here at the Gator Nationals, had to give up Lane Joyce as it went to Joe Amato by virtue of the lower elapsed time in the semifinals. Here's the finals in Pro Stock Eliminator. The Oldsmobile in the far lane of Warren Johnson. An Oldsmobile Cutlass, a 500 cubic inch engine. The car with Warren behind the wheel, weighing 2,350 pounds, running on gasoline through two four-barrel carburetors. His competition runner-up here one year ago from Totowa, New Jersey, Frank Iaconio finished number two in the world last season in the world championship points chase. His Chevrolet Camaro, again, 500 cubic inches, two four-barrel carburetors, gasoline for fuel, the best of the factory hot rods. Oldsmobile versus Chevrolet, and an advantage to Warren Johnson off the starting line. Warren's car has been faster all week long. He gets very close and almost loses control, but Warren Johnson wins Pro Stock title. 7.64 seconds elapsed time. His speed, 180 miles an hour. Watch again as Warren Johnson pulls an initial lead right off the starting line over Frank Iaconio. For the second year in a row, Iaconio must settle for the runner-up spot. But let's watch from a different angle. Watch near the finish line as Warren Johnson almost loses control of the Oldsmobile Cutlass. He reaches for the parachute release. You see his hand up towards the roof of the car. The parachute begins to deploy as Warren Johnson wins it. Warren Johnson found the miss in his motor, defeats Frank Iaconio, hole shot, and then big trouble on this end. Yeah, just the car got loose. I don't know if there was something on the track. We don't, uh, don't see anything wrong with the chassis, but it just... Got completely loose. I had to get out of it completely in the lights and hope he didn't pass me. <laughs> well, that got your attention, I'll bet. Well, it got mine for sure. <laughs> well, congratulations. Anytime you can beat Frank Iacone, you've really accomplished something, and it looks like it's going to be a terrific season for WJ. Well, Frankie's one of the best gentlemen in the sport, so it's, it's a pleasure for me to beat him, not from the same way of beating him, but just to race him and win. Congratulations again to Warren Johnson. WJ, the Pro Stock Champion. All eyes on this huge crowd riveted on the starting line as we get set for the final in Funny Car Eliminator. Kenny Bernstein has been the dominant car, but the surprising John Collins from Long Beach, California, qualified number two and is now in the finals against Bernstein. Into the staging beams, both cars leave on a green light. And it's a very close race. Kenny Bernstein in the near lane begins to pull away. And a tremendous run. And ladies and gentlemen, 260 miles an hour by a funny car as Kenny Bernstein shatters all performance standards for speed. And crew chief Dale Armstrong receiving the congratulations for Kenny Bernstein's effort as he drove that Ford Tempo bodied car through the entire quarter mile distance and the timing traps to run over 260 miles an hour. The first funny car ever tested in a wind tunnel, uh, thanks to Ford, and boy, did it pay off. 260, it sounds like science fiction. Uh, it's getting that way, isn't it? I, I'm telling you, I don't know where it's going to stop. It's just going to get better. Let's hope the winning doesn't stop for the Budweiser King and Kenny Bernstein. Here comes a crew that is second to none right now in funny car racing. Still cannot believe what they saw on the scoreboard. 260 miles an hour. The team that made it happen, Kenny Bernstein and Dale Armstrong. Joe Amato, the fastest man in the history of the sport, shaking his head at his crew chief, Tim Richards, saying, what can we do to top that? For Gary Beck, an unusual situation in the final as Beck had to give away lane choice. That means Joe Amato ran quicker than Gary Beck did in the semifinals. The lane choice went to Amato. He took the right-hand lane, where he's been running all day. So has Gary Beck. So Beck had to reprogram his car to run that left-hand lane. A close race off the starting line, but here comes Amato. And at the finish, it's Joe Amato. And look at the speed, 262 miles an hour. The crowd showing their absolute disbelief as the crew just shakes their heads. Joe Amato takes on the defending champ, the number one qualifier and the reigning world champion, beats him in the finals and sets a speed record in the process. Let's go down to Steve Evans with Joe Amato. Talk about your dream drag race. The number one car in the world against the number two car in the world. The world's quickest Gary Beck. The world's fastest Joe Amato, who has now gone even faster 
as the top fuel dragster set takes that speed record back from the funny cars. Two, six, two. We had to take it from the funny cars. When Timmy saw him, we were staging up. He says, you got to go 261, he said. But he just gave me a little more power. What did he go in ET? Uh, who cares? You won the Gator Nationals, the Gator Nationals, and you left first by four hundredths of a second. You did everything right, my friend. Yeah, well, some days you get up right and you do the right things. And boy, I've got the, the crew. You know, you surround yourself with people that may make you look good. And that's what I've got, a lot of good people. Well, you certainly do. You certainly do. And Gary Beck in the background crawls out of his car, a smile on his face. He's done the best that he can possibly do. In that kind of a drag race, boy, <laughs> there are no losers. The fans, of course, the big winner. You're looking at him. The fastest man ever in a quarter of a mile, Joe Amato. <laughs> Gary Beck says 262. An incredible finish to a tremendous drag race, the first ever 260 mile an hour times by both Funny Car and Top Fuel. We'll be right back. The top fuel champion at the Gator Nationals, Joe Amato, receiving the congratulations from his wife, Jerry. He's the fastest man in the sport at over 262 miles an hour. Steve, your final thoughts. Certainly one of the best drag races we have ever had the pleasure of covering. Kenny Bernstein, 260. Joe Amato, 262. The record books took a beating today at the Gator Nationals in Gainesville, Florida. Our congratulations to all of the winners and the record setters at this 15th annual Gator Nationals. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from Gainesville, Florida. The executive producer of Diamond P Sports is Harvey Pallish. Produced and directed by John B. Mullen. The 1984 Gator Nationals were brought to you by Motorcraft. Quality parts for all makes of cars and trucks. Motorcraft exceeds the need. And by Fabergé. Make every day your Brute Day with Brute by Fabergé. And by Goodyear. Say hello to Goodyear's Vector, the new design in radial tires. Promotional consideration provided for in a fee paid by Minwax Finish. America's favorite wood finishes for 80 years. Minwax makes it easy to get professional results. Bring out the beauty with wood finishing produced by Minwax. And by Sirts Breath Mints, you never know when you're going to wind up face-to-face -face with someone. With Sirts, you're always ready. Sirts and sugar-free Sirts for breath that's face-to-face -face fresh. And by Flavor Ice. Flavor Ice, America's favorite quick freeze fruit-flavored bars. 24 giant bars in a package. Assorted delicious flavors. Flavor Ice for cool refreshment. And by Deep Heating Rub. Mentholatum Deep Heating Rub or Lotion. Penetrating relief to soothe minor arthritis pain for hours. There's no beating deep heating. And by Super Fix-A-Flat. A flat tire. Now there's Super Fix-A-Flat. The heavy-duty latex sealant that inflates the tire and seals the puncture. Get Super fix a flat. Coverage of the 15th Annual National Hot Rod Association Gator Nationals was a presentation of Diamond P Sports.